Do you know that over 50% of the food on your plate is not really what you think it is? Hi, I'm Bernice Hunt and I am a food, a brain, <laughs> and I am a brain health specialist. I work with women just like you who are starting to notice a few memory issues and I help you to stay sharp so that as you age, you can still travel, have fun with your grandkids and experience new adventures without missing a B. As a public school teacher for over 30 years, I've worked a lot with percentages. And in my day, failing was when you were below 60%. And a lot of times they considered it failing when you were below 70%. So if what's on your plate, if 50% of it is not really what you think it is, you might say that you are failing to supply your body and your brain with the food that it needs. Now, did you catch my last video? A few days ago, I did a video on ultra processed foods. So if you didn't catch it, it's a quick video. It's on my YouTube channel. It's also on my Facebook page, Keep Your Brain Sharp. So you can go there and you can look at it there. Today, I wanted to continue with the definition of ultra processed foods and also talk about the health conditions that researchers are starting to link to ultra processed foods. Now, what is an ultra processed food? It is the highest level of food processing. We're all familiar with processed foods and we're, we eat them all the time. We, you know, we know what they are. We just think it's naturally a part of our diet. But about 15 or so years ago, they came up with the term ultra processed, which has kind of been on the down low. And we usually just think of processed foods. We don't often think of ultra processed foods, but did you know that when they did a study of the top 25 food manufacturers, they found that 86% of the food that they were manufacturing was ultra processed. And so that's the highest level. And when you find an ultra processed food, it's typically going to, typically going to have more than five ingredients. It's going to have more additives, a lot of additives. It's going to have a long shelf life and it's going to have some things in there that you don't even use. You don't even know where to get a lot of times when you cook your food at home. So it has these strange ingredients that's not part of home made cooking. Okay. All right. So that's an ultra processed food. And when I looked at it, um, I got intrigued. Number one, because the researchers didn't even call it food. They call it industrialized formulations. Yeah, that sounds kind of strange in itself. Industrialized. So I, you know, I got my little dictionary, start looking at this stuff. Industrialized. It's manufactured. That don't sound good. It's manufactured. And when they're talking about manufacturing, they're talking about being produced by machines. So instead of being grown, it's being produced by machines. Okay, so let's break that down a little bit more. So what do you talk about when you say manufactured? You're talking about inventing something, fabricating something, synthesizing something. Those are the synonyms, man-made, non-natural. Those are the synonyms that are associated with manufactured. That doesn't sound like something that I necessarily want to eat. What it made me think of, it made me think of Star Trek. You remember Star Trek? In the Star Trek movies, they had these machines called what? Replicators. Replicators. And replicators were machines. They'd go up to the machine, you know, Spock and all these guys. They'd go up to the machine and they say what they wanted. You know, I want a pizza. Whoosh. Out of the air came a pizza. They say, and they said, you know, I want a soup and sam, soup and salad, soup and sandwich, whatever. Whoosh. There it was. Now, the ultra processed food is not quite there yet. We're not at that extent. They're not making it out of nothing yet, <laughs> but they are making it out of components 
extractions, pieces of food, or they're using the raw food version that has been severely altered, okay, by machines, okay, in ways that we would normally not do it if we were at home making that food. Okay, so that was so intriguing to me. And what you need to know is that in the, mat the UPFs, they call them, which is ultra processed foods. So we're talking about preservatives. We're talking, like I said, different additives, artificial sweeteners, artificial flavors, artificial colors. Okay, emulsifiers. And we're going to talk about that a little bit in a minute. But those are things that are in there that are not growing, you know, out of a garden. Okay, so regarding the artificial sweeteners, they um, use a lot of um, aspartame, okay? And we know that that's like 200 times the sweetness of regular sugar. And it's also been linked to things, okay? You know, sugar is causing the inflammation and stuff as it is, but it's also been linked to other things like type 2 diabetes, Mm -hmm. like heart disease, like even a higher risk of mortality. Okay, there's other things that are happening with that. And when we talk about emulsifiers, that's what got me. Emulsifiers are food glue. What they use to make the food stick better together. Okay, it's like um, glue. Okay, it's going to make it stick. It's going to give it improve the texture of it. It's going to improve the shelf life of it. It's going to improve, improve the appearance of it. It's going to make it all come together nicely. Okay. And the problem is that it's in so many foods. It's in your mayonnaise, in your peanut butter, in your chocolate, in your meat products, in a lot of different things. That made me think about my uncle buddy. I shared this with you, um, I don't know when, a while back. But anyway, when I was little and he used to talk about fast food and he used to always share with me that he would not eat a fast food hamburger. And his logic with that was because he said, when, said you see, when I make a hamburger in my kitchen and I make that patty and, I, and I, I make that hamburger and then I flip it and whatever and I put it in my sandwich, it can fall apart on me. He says, but I'm looking at these hamburgers in these fast food places I have never seen one fall apart. I've never seen one fall apart. And he says, so that tells me there is something in there that is not in there when I'm cooking it in my house. So I don't know what they put in there, but I'm not eating it. And that's what he was talking about. Emulsifiers, the food glue. And they're finding out that that is linked to some health conditions. They're talking about cancer and cardiovascular diseases. They're doing studies now and they're finding those connections with that. I was like, wow, that makes sense. And that's in a lot of different processed foods, okay? But the thing is, there is no single food. I don't want to give you the impression that there's like a single food that you're supposed to stay away from because there's not. Like I told you, um, they had manufacturers, um, the top 25, 86% of everything that they produce was classified as ultra processed. So it wasn't just like one food causing the problems. You have to look at the whole concept. Okay. So what you need to do is look at the overall problems that they're, that are cropping up with ultra processed foods. And so they're talking, like I said, they're talking about dementia. They're talking about type two diabetes. They're talking about cancer, both breast cancer and cholesterol colorectal cancer. Okay. They're talking about weight gain. They're talking about cardiovascular diseases in terms of strokes and high blood pressure and other heart diseases. They're talking about those things. And that's all starting to become associated with this, these ultra processed foods. In fact, when they were talking about weight gain, gain they said that if you eat a lot of ultra processed foods, which you can unknow unknowingly do very easily, if you eat a lot of ultra processed foods, you're eating 500 more calories a day than if you were eating minimal processed or, or unprocessed food, okay? Or even processed foods. You know, processed foods has a little bit, the ultra processed takes it even to that other extreme. 
Okay. And so those things, that adds up. The thing that got me was those things are all things that increase, but eating ultra processed foods decreases your gut health. And you know, if your gut is in a bad way, it's going to affect a whole lot of stuff, including your brain. It also decreases longevity. There was a study like in 2019, I think, and it was talking about people dying prematurely and the risk of, of dying prematurely linked with how much ultra processed food you were consuming. And what they found out, they said, if you had four servings of ultra processed foods a day, it increased your death your, your risk of death, 62%. Whoa, four servings a day? If you eat one serving of ultra processed food a day, this study showed that it increased your risk for early death, 18% a day, which is better than 62, but that's still almost 20%, higher, higher chance. So it's how much your lifespan Shortening your lifespan by eating ultra processed, synthetic, man made, machine created food. Whoa. When I was reading that stuff, it made me think about the TV commercials. You know, all the side effects. They'll give you this TV commercial about a medication, right? And then after they, you know, are all happy and excited about the medication. They just run through really quick all the side effects, right? And then, and death. That'll be at the end of it. What? <laughs> you know, but that's what I started thinking about when I looked at all these side effects of the ultra processed foods. I said, whoa. So I needed to, t I need to talk about this because this is serious stuff, guys. Okay. So is that really want what? you want to be putting into your body? Is that really what you want to be giving your brain? There is a solution and they're talking about, they don't really expect you to just cut out point blank, zero amount of ultra processed foods because it's a lot everywhere and they don't, you know, they don't know that anyone's going to be that diligent. So they're not talking about cutting every single stitch of it out, but they are talking about decreasing it as much as you feasibly can, lowering them out and not having it at every meal and not having, even if you can go, not having ultra processed foods every day, you know? And so with that in mind, I was so jazzed because I just finished a recipe book and a mini course on brain healthy snacks and preps. I was like, wow, because guess what? In the, in that recipe book, I don't use any ultra processed. I try to use unprocessed or minimally processed or culinary processing. Those are the, the lowest one forms of processing in those recipes and in those meals showing you how that you can make healthier snacks. Like you can make your own chips. You can even make your own mayo. You can make your own nut butter. All of those, those things is a lot easier than you would imagine. Instead of buying those store-bought versions that are ultra processed, you can make certain things yourself and you can also prep your meals so that you don't have to buy those ready-made, you know, packaged frozen meals or whatever, or go to those fast foods and things. You can just learn how to prep yourself so you can have easy to fix meals during your week. Okay. So if you are interested in that, if interested in that, and I hope you are, I'm going to be leaving a link for you, or you can um, go straight there and see what that's all about and see what, if anything, that you're interested regarding that. Because guys, your brain's destiny is in your hands.